Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take another look at the creepy side of Deltarune Chapter 2. This is part 2 of a mini-series in which we explore the dark side of Toby Fox's follow-up to Undertale. Both games at first glance seem fairly light-hearted, but in fact contain many disturbing moments hidden within. In part 1, we looked at how to access the secret boss fight spam to Neo and explained his tragic backstory. Today, things get even more sinister as we explore how to unlock Deltarune's genocide route, dubbed by fans the Snowgrave Path. Not only will this video explain how to access the Snowgrave story path, we will also look at how it changes events thereafter. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. In order to access the Snowgrave route, a number of deviations from the main story path must be made. This begins after we enter Cyber City and Chris splits away from the other members of their group. We soon meet up with Noelle and she joins our party. When this happens, instead of proceeding forward as usual, we must backtrack to the trash zone at the far left side of the area. Noelle makes a joke about already regretting this, which becomes an unsettling foreshadowing for events to come. It isn't long before Chris and Noelle trigger their first enemy encounter. When this happens, rather than using traditional acts of mercy or violence, select a mysterious ability found within Noelle's command menu titled Ice Shock. When Noelle casts this very powerful attack, it freezes enemies to the spot. What's creepy about this is how, after leaving a battle, the enemy remains frozen to the exact spot we found them, forever frozen in time. Continue exploring to the far left until all enemies are frozen in this exact way. Do not use Chris to attack or act at any point, this will void the route. Instead, simply defend, which allows Noelle's TP to steadily rise so she may use her Ice Shock magic on each turn. Our objective is to kill anything we come across with this icy power, with every life being taken by Noelle's hand. When we reach the far side of Trash Zone and approach the sealed door to Spamton Shop, an eerie dialogue is spoken. Noelle asks why Chris brought her here, and follows up by commenting how this place feels creepy, but also mentions how it feels nostalgic. Judging by her sorrowful expression, this dialogue refers to a tragedy from Noelle's past. We're not going to dive too much into theory talk during this video, but it goes without saying that Noelle carries great pain and sadness in her heart. Once we re-enter the city, things seem far more ominous than before. Enemies now appear in more abundance throughout the streets, yet the busy city roads are now empty. The cars and many of the NPCs vanishing without trace. You'll also notice how Chris himself becomes more controlling and threatening towards Noelle as we play. In fact, in order to truly experience Snowgrave, we must pick the most inappropriate dialogue options. An example of this can be seen here, where the two reminisce of how Chris terrified Noelle on a big wheel many years ago. Therefore, she declines Chris's offer to ride with her. Afterwards, we are presented with an option for Chris to speak to himself stating, Noelle will ride with me. Noelle seems flustered by this forceful statement and reluctantly agrees, but is also phased about Chris acting so pushy. Next, walk over to the shoe store vendor and strike up a conversation. The vendor offers the duo some dating shoes. Noelle is quick to clarify that herself and Chris are just good friends. The salesman asks Chris if this is true, and at this point we must select the dialogue option, We're something else. Once again, Noelle grows confused and worried. Then, as we begin to walk away, the music fades down and the vendor presents us with a mysterious offer. Thank you. 
After being offered the freeze ring, we must have Chris continuously hound Noel to get it. To begin with, Noel seems happy, thinking Chris is offering to purchase the ring for her. But upon discovering that neither one possessed the funds to procure the trinket, the conversation begins to grow more and more uncomfortable. Chris insisting that Noel take the ring by any means necessary. She protests to this act of violence, but with enough pushing, eventually yields. The screen fades to black, and we hear the sound of Ice Shock. When the screen fades back, the vendor is nowhere to be seen. Noelle seems worried about what she may have done to get the ring, but quickly tells herself that the storekeeper must have given it to them as a gift. Despite this, Noelle buries her guilt, convincing herself it's good to be stronger, and even thanking Chris for their help. We can now open our inventory and equip the freeze ring, allowing Noelle to become stronger than ever before. Now she becomes enveloped in a bubble each time a battle is won, taking energy from her prey and growing stronger by the second. As our adventure continues, we notice changes in Noelle's personality. Shortly after completing the force field puzzle, where Noelle must stand on a deactivation switch while Chris crosses over to turn off the other side, she comments how she considers stepping off the switch. This action would of course result in Chris's death. After thinking this, Chris enters her mind and tells her that this way of thinking is natural. Noelle seems shocked that Chris manages to read her inner monologue. She must have been talking out loud, right? And just at that moment, the silence is broken as a creepy remix of the Cyber City theme starts up. After reaching the two large roads in the centre of the city and heading down the rightmost path, we discover a secret back alley containing a dumpster. When approaching this dumpster, a mysterious voice communicates from inside. The speech patterns will be familiar to anyone who has watched my previous video looking at Spamton and his creepy backstory. Spamton tells us that if all enemies are vanquished, he will show us an irresistible deal. For now we must continue onward. Our next destination is the second mouse puzzle area. Now usually it falls to Chris to solve this puzzle, however on the Snowgrave route it is possible to intimidate Noelle to the point she removes the puzzle entirely. Keep selecting Proceed and the following creepy cutscene plays out. Noelle is beginning to reach the point of no return, and now has a very different outlook on how she acts towards things. When reaching the third mouse based puzzle, she no longer hesitates and instantly removes the obstacle before Chris can even attempt to solve it. Noelle comments how this is a good thing, solving puzzles by herself, taking new things for herself, and defeating enemies by herself. She feels stronger each time, yet does not remember the horrific thing she has done to achieve said power. But Noelle convinces herself if Chris tells her to do something, then she should do it. 
Once all enemies from the city are dealt with, we must return to Spamton's dumpster, where in return for our killing spree, he rewards Noel with a new ring. This one is labelled Fawn Ring. Equip it and continue to the final stage of the Snowgrave route. Upon meeting Birdly for the second time and preparing to battle him, things feel far more sinister than on a typical Deltarune playthrough. Noelle is reluctant, but must obey Chris and so prepares to kill her friend. During the Birdly battle, he will only perform a handful of attacks. However, they are more deadly and harder to avoid than his usual roster of abilities. There is no point attacking Birdly, so instead defend as both Noel and Chris up their TP meter until it reaches its maximum level. Thanks to the Fawn Ring, Noel has access to a new magic attack known as Snowgrave. Upon selecting this ability, Noelle initially refuses Chris's command, proclaiming she does not know what they are talking about. As we continue to demand she uses the Snowgrave, Noelle grows more and more pained, pleading for us to stop. But eventually, she gives up her struggle, and the following sequence plays out. <laughs> Noelle suddenly feels unwell and decides to go home. She walks off into the deserted city streets, leaving Chris to observe Birdly's frozen corpse. This is the majority of the Snowgrave route, however there are a couple of major changes before we reach the ending, so let's take a look at what's new. The most striking difference in the Snowgrave path is surely its brief duration. After the Birdly boss fight is over, Chris enters a manhole and is taken straight to the Queen's mansion. Inside there is no sign of a Queen at all, and most of the regular enemies are missing too. All of the Queen's portraits have been altered and now resemble paintings of Spamton. All enemies now belong to Spamton too, weird bouncing balls known as peepees. Most of the mansion is now closed off, and instead we take the teacup elevator straight to Noelle's room. Susie enters the room, and after a long wait, it is implied she wasn't so PG-13 during her interaction with Noelle this time, hinting at something raunchy occurring within, Susie cheekily whispering to Chris that she'll tell us later. After this, we meet up with the Queen and experience the cutscene that would normally play during her boss encounter. However, this time there is no need to fight. The Queen is quite placid, informed by Rousey that creating a new fountain would be devastating and cause chaos throughout both dark and light worlds alike. So the Queen bails on her evil scheme, becoming an ally and leaving to go and live in Castletown with the other monsters. 
Instead, Chris must make their way to the fountain alone, but before they can close it up, Spamton appears in his Neo form to stop us. If you check out my Spamton Explained video, you'll remember that this corrupted being once lived in the Queen's Mansion as a highly successful salesman. He received this success after being contacted by a mystery caller named Mike, a sinister entity who we theorised appears on the TV at the end of Chapter 2. Mike seems to be working with Gaster in some capacity, and the two infected Spanton's code, turning him into a puppet for their own misdeeds. Now, with the fountain open, Spamton wishes to harness its infinite power for his own greedy gain, and presumably to aid Mike and Gaster in their quest for dominance too. This triggers a long and very difficult battle against Spamton Neo, where Chris must win alone. By the end of this fight, Spamton ups his defence, making it impossible to defeat him. That is, until Chris calls for a little help, and Noelle answers. The following sequence playing out as a result. The friends all awaken back in the safety of a light world. Noelle exclaims that she was dreaming, but it felt more like a nightmare. But not everything is normal. Birdly doesn't wake up. In fact, no one can wake him. He simply lays slumped over the desk, presumed to be sleeping. But is he? When returning to the Dark World and visiting Castletown, Chris and Susie meet up with the Queen, who comments on how empty it feels. When then exploring the town, it is indeed eerily quiet. No monsters were recruited, so everything is silent and the whole place feels like a ghost town. Only the monsters encountered in Chapter 1 remain. When talking to the King, he refuses to get into a proper conversation, simply stating, you left them behind, didn't you? Just as you left us. But the creepiest part of the Snowgrave path is found upon meeting with Noelle in the hospital. While speaking with her father and playing a portable video game, Noelle mentions using the Ice Shock ability. Her dad comments on how she is hogging the controller and acting a little differently. Noelle claims she has just had a weird dream, but feels fine, although we can tell this isn't the case. When she notices Chris standing at the far side of a room, Noelle acts shocked. She quickly hurries out. This is where things become very strange. As Chris leaves the room, we hear an internal monologue from Noelle, where she alludes to some key information relating to Chris and the entity which takes hold of him during certain points in the story. Here is the sequence in full. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
As I previously mentioned, this video isn't going to fully dissect the lore or enter into theory talk. We've already run quite long, and there are several quite disturbing possibilities for the direction this story may be headed. These are alluded to by the ending of Deltarune Chapter 2, which remains the same during this alternate story path. But I do hope you enjoyed this look at Deltarune's Snowgrave route, and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.